bear with me. I've been a little under the weather the last couple of days. So I will uh, try to get through this. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about labor, labor leadership. The Labor Leadership Society is for union members who contribute $350 or more annually and have demonstrated a personal commitment to caring for one another. <clears throat> Their leadership sets an example for others to follow. That would be many of you. In 2011, 249 members gave over $131,000, which was an increase from the $105,000 given by 189 members in 2010. Um, that's quite a jump, and if we can continue to increase those numbers, that would be great. That would uh, be a great help to our community. As the chair of the United Way Labor Leadership Giving Society, and on behalf of the Hawkeye Labor Council, I thank you all for your continued support to our community services program. I want to uh, give you a quick bit of history that I found interesting over the past few years, and I feel you may as well. Organized labor's involvement in community fundraising can be tracked back, as Lois said, as far as 1941, when unions ran campaigns and contributed the money raised to Community Chest. Community Chest eventually, you may not know, evolved into what we now call a lot of United Ways. By 1943, the labor movement had become a very important part of what was known as an annual campaign. Sound familiar? Full-time liaisons have been around since 1946. That would be Jay Larson. Working in partnership, working in partnership. Well, Jay hasn't been around since 1946, but you, you get the gist. <laughs> Let me do that again. Full-time liaisons have been around since 1946, working in partnership with the community chess, uh, United Ways. And this carried over after the AFL-CIO merged in 1955. We now have around 200 liaisons throughout the United States and six liaisons here currently in the state of Iowa. Since 1969, the AFL-CIO and the United Way of East Central Iowa have worked together to strengthen our communities. This partnership has provided services to members of organized labor, their families, and not just those folks, but every single person throughout our communities. So I'd like to say thank you to our liaison, Jay Larson, for all you do, and for bringing us all here tonight. What you do, what you do for organized labor and what you do for the community uh, is a thankless job. I realize that. So once again, thank you for all you do behind the scenes that folks have no idea. Thank you, Jay. So I'd like to close by saying uh, one more thank you to all of you. And I encourage you to tell your coworkers, your friends, your family members uh, who have been involved with organized labor about the relationship that uh, we have with United Way of East Central Iowa and the United Ways throughout the United States. Um, we, are, we are part of the communities. And as many of you have heard me say, when I was a liaison out on the campaign trail, our first responsibility, every community's first responsibility is to its people. And that has been that from the beginning of time, that will never change. So I encourage you to keep giving, keep volunteering, and keep advocating. I'd like to introduce a special guest we have here tonight, President of the Iowa Federation of Labor, Ken Sager. Well, good evening, and thanks for the kind invitation to uh, be here. Um, this is like old home week. I started uh, working with United Way here in eastern Iowa. Uh, Norm and a few others may, might have been around back in that time period, 19, middle 80s. Uh, Ethan Sproston, who was one of the predecessors for Jay, asked me to, uh, why don't you get involved in United Way? And I said, oh, okay. And uh, next thing you know, I'm on the board. And I'm thinking to myself, how did I get here? Well, and I got to looking backwards and doing a little research like Rick was talking about. And I found out that 
Many, many years ago, the organization was established to take care of people in time of need. Um, was I describing a union or a united way? And if you think about it, there are many similarities in what it is the union movement does in terms of trying to help out those in time of need, particularly when unions were established. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we take for granted today in terms of being able to negotiate collective bargaining agreements um, weren't allowed, literally, at that point in time. So unions basically were groups of people that took care of each other when workers were injured or somebody was killed on the job. They, they would raise funds and help out with uh, medical bills or burial expenses and things of that nature. It evolved over the years into what we now know as the labor movement, but really what the labor movement and what United Way both are all about is taking care of our community. And the similarities go on and on because most of the labor unions that I'm aware of have workplace safety committees. Well, that's not that much different in terms of providing safety for workers than what United Way does in terms of taking uh, steps to make sure that our kids have safe places after school. But there is so many parallels between what these two organizations do that it was only natural some 70 years ago that we bonded and worked together to grow our communities. And critical needs right now are out there. At this time, you all know what's going on in politics, right? It's crazy, everybody's beating each other's brains out. But meanwhile, back in our communities, there are people with needs. Our kids need to have um, after school. They need help at school. We need to make sure that families have the opportunity to get a job that actually pays for uh, the cost of living. There are so many needs from Individuals who need to have income security. There are people who don't understand the, the fundamental things that you and I maybe take for granted. Doing your taxes. Well, the United Way has a program to take care of that. Whether it's um, trying to get education programs established, and that's happening all over the United States, particularly in, in places here in Iowa, where we're trying to make sure that we bring people out of poverty by providing um, good jobs and opportunities for education to upskill. Now, if you think about this, am I describing the United Way or the labor movement? It is exactly a parallel path that our two organizations are pursuing. And I'm very thankful, frankly, that I had happy opportunities here because of the labor movement to be involved in the United Way. It gave me an opportunity to experience quite a few things I probably otherwise would not have had the opportunity. I got to meet and work with Norm Sversenbaum. That was a heck of an advantage for me. Although um, he may not agree to it at this point in time. But the people from other unions that I engaged with in United Way, people from business community that I would not have otherwise interacted with, it gave me the opportunity to broaden my uh, opportunities in the community. But at the same time, it gave me a sense of understanding what the agencies do in the community and what the needs were in the community and made me a better advocate in the long haul to talk to my members at my local union about the need to participate. And we were able to bring more people in and get more people involved over time. And that's no different from you know what we need to do right now in our communities. When we look around and see uh, all the needs that are out there, sometimes it's overwhelming. It really is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen to make our communities better. And Rick talked about the needs. You know, the first thing that people need to do in a community is take care of the people in the community. I don't know of another organization that does that job as well as United Way. You think about the broad spectrum of organizations that United Way funds in this community. Is there anybody else, anybody else, who reaches out in that many different directions and tries to improve the lives of people in their community. I don't think there is. And particularly at this point in time, when we have uh, decreases in uh, public spending, the needs for private sector to step up and fill in some of those gaps is there more strongly than it has been in the past. Because everybody knows just how tough it is to go out and talk about uh, raising taxes. Uh, <coughs> Rove out here is a former legislator. 
he knows exactly what it's like in Des Moines to have that kind of conversation. It's not something that a lot of people like to hear about. Fundamentally, the reason that we have a society, a civil society, is because of the things that we do for each other. And the only way that we're going to continue to be able to move our communities forward and take care of those folks at the bottom of the ladder is through united activities, through the United Way. So it's absolutely critical that we make sure that we thank the people who contribute. And so I thank you for doing that. Not just the money that you contribute, although that's critically important, but it's the time that you give that makes a fundamental difference in the lives of people. It's you advocating for the, the cause, the agency, advocating for United Way itself. That makes a fundamental difference. It's getting other people involved in things you firmly believe are important to the community. That makes a fundamental difference. Labor with the United Way makes a difference in the community. And I'm very proud to have been a part of the United Way here in Eastern Iowa. I'm very proud to be a part of the labor movement because those two organizations make a difference. So we must continue to, as the sign said, give, advocate, and volunteer. But what we really need to do is to reach out, to reach out to other people in our labor organizations and express to them the need for them to be involved and give back to our communities. Because that is going to be what makes the difference. So I thank you for your attention and I thank you for the invitation. And uh, thanks to all of you for participating in the United Way.